Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is Introduction to Google Analytics. This is going to be the second lesson in a five lesson set covering Google Analytics for the purposes of Introduction to Business Analytics, which is a fourth year course at the University of Waterloo. So let's get started. So we're going to log into Google Analytics. And since my password and username are cached into the system, I'm automatically going to be logged in. We're going to open up this session. And then I'm going to adjust, very similar to the first lesson, I'm going to adjust the time frame to be a three year period. So, what you're going to see first is we're going to cover the overview session, which is basically a set of visualizations and dashboards to that cover your, your audience. So the simplest, the first session is the number of new sessions. So the number of visitors that you've received over, over, over that time period. So how this can be useful is that you can see how visitors translates to sales, translates to donors to develop that kind of inference. See if there is a connection, if there is that kind of relationship and as well, is there a causation that underpins that story? Because if there is, that means the more traffic that's generated to your website, the more sales, donors, more events they held, held, whatever your KPI, your key performance indicator is, that's a very simple way of viewing it. So, but if you don't want to view it by day, maybe you want to view it by week. You just click on this dashboard and it provides a little bit of a cleaner view. Or if you hold monthly events and you want to measure how successful those monthly events or monthly campaigns are at generate traffic, uh, you can also perform that high level analysis using using this view. If we scroll down, what you'll see here is uh, sessions. So the number of times that they've opened your website uniquely, uh, the number of users. So the number of individuals that uh, unique individuals that have accessed your website, page views. So how many pages do they actually see? The number of pages uh, per session. So you just take this number divided by this number, which is a, a useful view because it tells you how involved are people, how engaged are people in your website? So for example, if it's a very low number, like two, but you actually require four or five page views to actually accomplish an e-commerce transaction or to obtain the appropriate information, then you can look for, to redesign your website or probably those appropriate links or the menu options, different levels of analysis that you can perform. The average duration, so obviously the, the longer they are on your website, the the more engaged they likely are or uh, the more information that they're able to take away. Uh, bounce rate. So this is basically where, where do, when do people come to your website and basically only view one page then leave. So they bounce right away. So that tells you that uh, either your landing page where basically they're referred from another website is the only information that they need or that they're landing on a page and they they may not get the best interpretation or perception of what your website or organization is all about. Um, so you gotta think about, can you, and when they click the link, maybe you wanna provide them the location information or about us as opposed to um, some sale or some, some certain event that may be too isolated, but really depends and evaluate and then when we go to the different options and different views, there's able, there's ways that you can dive a little bit deeper, but this just gives you a high level overview. The comparison of returning versus new visitors. So if your organization's all about building customer relationships and having them keep re-returning to, to your website, uh, an example maybe if you're a car mechanic and you would want someone to come in every month to change their oil or to come in to do their annual repairs or um, maintenance. It's so not something where a returning cost, returning visitor would probably be more valuable than a new one if you're looking to develop your customer base in, in that manner. But if you're an organization that really does something one time and you're looking for new traffic or new hits or referrals, then you would look for new visitors as a, as the more appropriate measure. Then we dive a little bit deeper here. You can look at different demographics. So we'll go to different demographics before we dive a little bit here. But here, essentially, you can see how many people, what kind of, what's the default language on their computer and on their browser uh, that's tying to it. So, for example, if you had a lot of individuals that were, that had, um, in this case, my third most popular one, it's not very common, is, is Chinese. But if you had a lot of individuals where Chinese is very popular, maybe you want to consider 
putting an option to translate your website to Chinese so that it makes it more user friendly, more engaged, more specific to your audience. So very easy and quick analysis that you can perform. It also may, if you have a lot of individuals that are Chinese that are accessing your website, maybe you want to look into is there uh, a Chinese business association or some kind of cultural event that you want to choose to sponsor in because you know that a lot of people of that language um, or of that um, culture um, visit, visit your website. So it can tailor your website and your traffic in that manner. Uh, then the various systems, which we'll get to when we go to the other other areas, uh, mobile. So a very simple way is like how many people are actually ac accessing your website through a mobile website, through their mobile device. So then you got to think about sh if there's enough traffic, should I be making my website mobile friendly, which is which is a very important decision because obviously it takes time and effort, but or should I develop a mobile app so people can obtain that information and be able to connect and communicate and engage them in that manner. So let's go to the so this overview provides a lot of really great information. So it's it's uh, extremely useful. So it's a it's a great way to uh, provide it. And as well, you can export the data. You can also email it. So you can have the overview be sent over a CSV PDF on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. So you can really set up those those schedules. And um, if you want to set up so it's sent, it's sent to the marketing manager or the CFO or to the to the owner of the organization in a periodic time period, uh, you can do that. And it's a really useful view. So there's you do quarterly, monthly, weekly, on a Monday and a Sunday, um, et cetera, active for a certain period of time, who you're going to send to. Uh, you can tailor, tailor the analysis. So really useful information, really an uh, really easy way to provide some quick snapshots to to the appropriate individuals. But let's go into the other areas. So we go into the demographic overview. Oh, sorry, I actually don't have any data here. But if you did have the data, you could also look at age, gender. Um, currently, I don't have that information currently set up through my website, but that would be a really interesting view of way of analyzing the data. Same thing with interests. I don't really have that much information here. So let's go to geography. So again, you can look at language over time. Um, bounce rate, number of new users. So you'll see that, for example, people that uh, are speaking whatever ESAR is, that my bounce rate is very high for there. So if you had a very high bounce rate, but a lot of people from that website, maybe there's some metadata where they're they're getting to your website, but that's not really the appropriate one. So you, in that case, even if you had a lot of users that were Chinese, for example, but the bounce rate is very high, you may may not want to tailor your website because those are individuals that may be accidentally coming across your website. Um, conversion goal rates, that's more around campaigns uh, and conversions to, to actual sales. Uh, number of sessions, so if, if there was a particular set that was actually higher than one or lower, uh, that's something to, to consider as well. So you notice that every time it's one, the bounce rate is 100% because on average they're visiting one page which means that they're, they're leaving right away. So your bounce rate is expected to be very high. Uh, location. So location is actually a very interesting view. So you can see by various countries. So you'll see majority of my traffic is from Canada, but you can also dive into here and to see by province. So again, you see that most of mine are, are, are Ontario. So let's go by city, for example, here. And then what you'll see, a very like nice visual diagram you'll see that most of my users are in in Waterloo. But then you also see that a good chunk of them are in Toronto. So if I only provide services in Waterloo, and say a very simple example would be, if I only provide services in Waterloo, uh, but then I see that there's quite a bit of traffic coming from Kitchener and the bounce rate's pretty good. So they're in the number of sessions they have, all the indication that these are users that actually visit my website. Maybe I should consider expanding my business to Kitchener. Or maybe I should consider hosting an event in Toronto because there are clearly people that are accessing my website from, from that domain. Um, so you can go into Waterloo and, and see different, different dives there. So that's, that's good to know. Uh, if you go to behavioral, like new versus returning. So you can see new visitors, uh, returning visitors. Our returning visitors, they're, actually this one is surprisingly, the bounce rate's higher. So they may be only looking at, they know exactly where my website to go. 
Uh, so Bouncer is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, how long they're spending it. Uh, so frequency, it's the number of page views that they have, engagement, so how long they are staying on the website, uh, how many pages that they're viewing. So some really uh, interesting ways of interpreting it. So you can see like when people are viewing 20 plus pages, how many pages are they viewing, the number of the frequency of, so for example here, there's 53 times where someone or a set of new users are, are in this case, another set of new sessions where they visited uh, 10 or 10 pages. And you'll see that 10 times 53 gives you this 530. So that's good. That's interesting. Let's go to technology. So technology, again, like should you be developing your website that optimizes, in this case, mine's multi-chrome. Uh, but should, you, should I be thinking about Firefox? Should I be testing my website against Firefox and Internet Explorer? Because there's quite a few and there. There's all, indica all these indications that they're actually real users. Or Android or Opera or these different types of browsers. So all interesting stuff. Networks. So network is actually even more details. That tells you exactly where the network is. So you can see most of my users, a lot of my users are using the Waterloo Network, University of Waterloo Network. So if I'm advertising an event, should I be advertising at the University of Waterloo? Because clearly people are accessing it there. So some really useful information. Mobile. So the type of devices. So you'll see desktop, mobile, uh, tablets. If we dive a little bit further here. The type of devices that they're accessing when they, when they are using uh, mobile devices. You'll see a lot of iPads, iPhones. Very important for testing, understanding of your target market. So if you know that they're iPads and iPhones, who are who are those people typically? Can I tailor, can I then gain further inferences around who the users are that are actually seeing my website? And then user flow, which is a super, super important view in, in my opinion. This tells you what's the first page that they uh, that they access and then how many people drop off. So in this case, a thousand, there's a thousand 20 sessions uh, that access my publications, then 80% of those individuals drop off. But where do they go? Where do they go next? So if I highlight through, you can see that a lot of them move towards uh, work experience, resumes, uh, other pages. So that tells you how they're flowing through. But it's super important because if you have an e-commerce transaction, you can you can trace the flow and see are people going through four of the five pages, then dropping off of the fourth one. So then maybe you should consider a redesign of your fourth page or your third page, or are they spending, are they just dropping off right away? We can do it also do it by the mailing campaign. So there's different ways that you can, and we're going to discuss a little bit more about mailing campaigns in other videos, but if you have a certain like advertising campaign where you advertise through Google and you'll see that um, one campaign leads you to the about us and 80% uh, of people throw flow through to transaction. Well, if you do it on a, an event page, do people just drop off right now? Or is there a high bounce rate? Do they only visit one or two pages and then drop off? Or when you're looking at when they're flowing through, is there a logical section, session? So if they're looking at about the products, should you have a button here that says like, go ahead and purchase the product so that they're logically flowing to, to that next page, getting you closer to the sales or the transaction. So lots of interesting views that you can perform and uh, in my opinion, user flow is probably one of the most easy and useful ways of understanding how your how your users. So again, you can export it, the level of detail that you want to see, so fewer or more connections, so different metrics that you can apply. In this case, it's doing it by region. So really interesting way of, of, of looking at the data. But for now, that's the audience overview. Uh, until if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. But until the next session, I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good day.